Drought 2011. The worst ever drought in 60 year history of East Africa. The Horn of Africa comprises Djibouti, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia. In earlier times, this area was referred to as Habasha. It is to no amazement that the people of Habasha pride themselves as being one of those few nations that Islam reached at its beginning. Through the noble words of Jafar ibn Abu Talib radiallahu anhu, the light of Islam shone over this region even before that of the blessed Medina. Although everything was not fine before the famine in Habasha, but the life was normal with no one having any idea that the 2011 was coming with a huge disaster. Millions of Muslims, already in the lap of poverty, were left with no food, no water, and nowhere to turn to. Children starved, mothers wept, and the fathers had no answers. Quenching their thirst was but a dream. The water had disappeared. The dead were buried even without their compulsory bath. This brutal dry season turned the region upside down. Thousands fled from southern Somalia into northeast Kenya, seeking relief in the sprawling Dadaab refugee camp. In their search for help, mothers and children walked for weeks for hundreds of miles on bare and blooded feet. Many of them headed to the cities with a huge inflow to Mogadishu, Bedoa and Efgoi. Through Ramadan, UWT teams oversaw relief efforts across Dadaab, Larissa, and Modagash in northeast Kenya. Over 8,000 emergency food packs were handed out to exhausted Somali families arriving at the entry point of Dadaab camp, a camp that had come to symbolize the massive suffering taking place across the region. In the parched areas of Gherisa and Modagash, Further 4,000 families received food aid, while around the city of Garissa, iftar programs were set up in many masajid. <laughs> Throughout July, August and September, thousands of food packages were distributed to families in the Bay and Bakol districts of Somalia, the epicenter of this crisis. On the day of Eid al-Fitr, 5,000 refugee families in Mogadishu received freshly cooked food. From Bedoa city, a water tanker was deployed delivering water to 1,000 families in the Bay and Bakol regions each day. Once the rains arrived, three tankers were sent to Mogadishu to provide water to the huge refugee camps that had now blanketed the city. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, respected brothers and sisters in the UK. Uh, this is Ummah Welfare Trust in Mogadishu, Somalia. Alhamdulillah, one of the best projects of Ummah Welfare Trust that we are doing here and we're going to show you today is giving these people clean drinking water, inshallah. Uh, by the side of me, you have two large water uh, distributing uh, vehicles. Um, alhamdulillah, a very amazing amount of water in these two, 41,960 litres of clean drinking water to be precise, inshallah, which will be given on your behalf to uh, these people who have lack of access to clean, uh, clean drinking water. Alhamdulillah, this is one of three uh, water tankers that Umar Welfare Trust is currently operating. And Alhamdulillah, you will see the benefit. You can see the lines of the people over here waiting anxiously with their cartons uh, to take some clean drinking water at home. To overcome the shortage of water, construction of 170 open water wells across rural Somalia is also underway. 
To mobilize resources much quickly, offices and storage centers were established in Mogadishu and Bedoa. Every corner of drought-hit Somalia was now within reach. But more had to be done. Three UWT cargo planes brought relief supplies of tents, food packages, kitchen utensil sets and gifts for children. Alhamdulillah, due to these planes, tents were distributed in the camps of Gergar, Guluwain, Garsur, and Al Rahma in Mogadishu, in Bunkai and Al Yasser camps in Bedoa, and in the towns of El Ad and Bardir in the district of Gido. <laughs> Forty-five kg food packs were handed out to refugee families across the Hodan district of Mogadishu, and kitchen utensil sets, which last a lifetime, were distributed in the districts of Bay, Gido, and Banadir. We're still in the camp at Mogadishu, uh, where the majority of the refugees are from Baidua, and over here we have uh, Sister Fatima, uh, who's got two children. The same story with her as well. Her husband is in uh, Baidua, and he has sent. Uh, his family, the mother and the two children, to this camp in order to safeguard themselves. And unfortunately, this child over here has uh, been having fever on and off, fever on and off for the past two months or so. Actually, more than two months. Uh, the sister actually said that the child has been ill with fever since Ramadan, and Ramadan was in the whole month of August. So, Subhanallah, it's now we're in October, and the fever has still not going away. And you can see the toll it's taken on the child. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the child shifa inshallah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability to help these people who are suffering in the hour of need I just remind myself again once again what it means to help other people the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman yarhamu man fil ardi yarhamukum man fil sama that the merciful people the most, the most merciful has mercy upon them have mercy on the people of this earth the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you we have seen these pictures time and time again on different news uh, channels and this is reality we never thought that we'd actually see this by our own eyes but subhanallah this is the reality and i plead to all of you inshallah to do whatever you can donate whatever you can for these people <laughs> Ummah Welfare Trust always tries its best to help the ignored those who are unheard, who have no support, and yet remain steadfast in the struggles with this life. This is why Ummah Welfare Trust, in whichever country it administers relief work, will always extend a hand to the widow, to the orphan, to the sick, to the disabled. This is Brother Abdullah, uh, he's writing the names down now um, and when he's issuing the card he's also taking the code number uh, which is specific uh, as you can see as you can see the code number here this red one uh, that's what's going to be written down on our own diary we will keep this copy and the card is given to the recipient Ya Hadi Ya Badir, Ya Baqi Ya Warith, Ya Rashid Ya Sabur, Ya Rashid Ya Sabur, Subhanaka Ya Ilah, La Ilah Illa Anta Subhanaka Inna Kunna Minna Dhalimeen, Allahumma Ejjalana Al Maqbulin, Assalamu Sallallahu Sallallahu Muhammad, Barakallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallahu Minna Walinkum. The charity also launched a nationwide fundraising campaign for school children in the UK called Kids for Kids. The campaign encouraged children across the UK to raise money and extend a hand to refugee children in Somalia.
School children's efforts allowed new clothes and gifts to be handed out to poor Somali children in the refugee camps across Mogadishu. Smiles were also brought back to the faces of sick children of Banadir Hospital, the city's largest hospital. During these relief efforts came the Holy Day of Qurbani. 2,700 goats were sacrificed for the drought victims. Famine hit areas of Hodur, Burhakaba, Ufro, Wajid, Bedoa, and Banadir were targeted. Alhamdulillah, approximately 100,000 displaced persons benefited from the Qurbani project in Somalia. I've just started a cooked food program, Alhamdulillah, for the patients over here and for the relatives as well of those patients who come here. So this is, inshallah, uh, ongoing project that Umar Warfat is doing in here on the ground in Mogadishu. To help poor patients in their rehabilitation, UWT initiated cooked food programs in Banadir Hospital and Medina Hospital. Alhamdulillah, 1,000 patients and their attendees now receive freshly cooked rice, meat, vegetables, and some fruit every single day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Donors in the UK. You can see the condition of some of the children being affected by severe diseases and wounds here in Banadir Hospital. And many of these people are very poor. And if Umar Welfare Trust was not providing them with cooked food on a daily basis, then many of these would have to fend for themselves or die out of starvation. Recent generations in Somalia have grown up accustomed to nothing but war, displacement and hunger. The number of orphans in the country has inevitably spiraled. Viewing the difficulties faced by orphan girls and boys, two separate centers were established. Markaz Umm al-Mumineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, in Mogadishu, and Markaz Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, in Bedoa. Boarding facilities were provided for 700 orphan boys and girls in both of these centers. All services including food, beds, clothes, books and medical treatment were made available. Alhamdulillah, the orphanage at Bedoa is still functional and benefiting 350 orphan children. <laughs> We have Mustafa here. He will be um, sharing some ahadith with us. A hadith that they've been learning in Markaz Umar ibn al-Khattab, the orphanage supported by Umar Welfare Trust. The teachers have been teaching them Quran. Many, many of these young children here have memorized majority of the Quran. Some are Huffaz as well. And uh, most of them, or nearly all of actually all of them, have been learning hadith and memorizing the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Mustafa here will be sharing some hadith with us, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Thumma salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'ina wa ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Anabiyya ala shiddad bin Aus ad-Dari radiyallahu anhu qal Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay Fa'idha qataltum fa'ahsinu al-qitla Fa'idha dhabahtum fa'ahsinu al-dhibah Fal-yurih ahadukum shafratuh wal-yurih dhabihatuh Following the emergency relief operation, the Umma Welfare Trust is now moving towards the mid-term and long-term phases. Supplies including specifically designed 5,000 steel shelters, stitched clothes, mushaf, thousands of food packages, and 10,000 kitchen sets will be transported on monthly basis till the holy month of Ramadan. Oh. 
Despite all these efforts, the struggle between life and death goes on. Much more needs to be done to save thousands of human beings. The lineage from Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu stands on the precipice of death. The situation they face is heartrending. It brings tears in your eyes. In this situation, the Muslims must remind themselves of all those sacrifices rendered by Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu for the sake of Islam, who would always be pronouncing Ahad Ahad, even being laid on the hottest sands with heavy stone placed on his chest. What if he complained to the Almighty on the Day of Judgment that my people were dying of thirst and hunger while the Muslims were being silent spectators? Viewing the shadows of death looming over the skies of Habasha, we also need to remind ourselves that this was the very land that gave shelter to helpless and powerless Muslims and provided them with food and security while today the elder and the younger ones of this land are starving of food, security, and shelter. Every time you take food or see your children quenching their thirst, just think of those starving children from the lineage of Sayyidina Bilal anhu, who are dying of hunger, hunger, hunger and, and thirst. thirst.